TG Geeks, episode 41, October 5th, 2015. Wait, what were we talking about? Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery. Sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane and we are coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely, not quite so hot, Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raginton, also coming from, it's only 91 degrees outside Phoenix, Arizona. And it feels wonderful. Well, 91 degrees in Arizona f- always feels wonderful compared to 100 and whatever. Yeah, and when the sun goes down, you can actually roll the windows down and drive with the <laughs> windows open. Yeah, like we did last <laughs> night. It was quite pleasant. At 91 degrees. <laughs> it, it felt good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can't do that anyplace else. We got some news for you here. Okay, so Ridley Scott is really making the rounds right now. Of course, he's got this new movie coming out called The Martian, starring Matt Damon. Uh, But a lot of people are kind of wondering, what's he doing in terms of past films, possible franchises? And one of them, one of the big talks is Prometheus. Now, this is a, a rather beleaguered movie. It got a lot of flack for it. I think a lot of people were sort of hoping for a proper sequel, if you will, to his 1980, ooh, I want to say it was 1981, uh, film Alien, which is just downright terrifying. More of a prequel, right? Uh, Well, Prometheus, yeah, it actually is more of a prequel, that's true. So he was approached, what's going on with Prometheus? Well, it turns out that there are going to be three, count them, three. Uno, dos, tres. Yes, Prometheus Ein, sequels. Five, right. Right, uh, un, deux, trois. Uh, and we actually got the so name. three now? Yeah, three. <laughs> we actually got the name of the first sequel of the pre-Alien movies. I think I need a flow chart. And it's, uh, in, it's not going to be called Prometheus 2. Instead, it's going to be called Alien Paradise Lost. Mm-hmm. Now, before that, it was revealed that there were, there were only going to be plans. They're only going to be doing uh, no fewer than the three movies and these were all going to, ah, 1979, yes. that's the, They were all going to eventually lead up to the 1979 Alien up to that point. And, of course, would, would, uh, would, would Ridley actually have the time to be able to do some of these, these movies, given the fact that he's enormously busy, and he's also still working on another Blade Runner. Oh, my. Yeah, he, that's still on, on the board as well. But, uh, yeah, he says that he's very much on board in doing all of these. And it, while Prometheus was su- supposed to be somehow drawn from uh, Lovecraft's The Mountain of Madness, and right now there's this big Lovecraft thing going on, uh, this one is actually going to be based more on Milton's Paradise Lost. Mm. Mil- a, Milton? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, which is very unusual. Uh, no one really quite knows what... Um, what he's actually thinking about doing but yeah this is referring to john milton's epic poem which details the biblical fall of man and ridley scott points out that satan is the major most interesting character in the story and he rather in 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 ridley's own wonderful mysterious sort of way kind of hints that i guess we're going to see something very similar in the prometheus sequel and and um he actually said the handsome guy gets all the fun and all the girls, doesn't he? And he's the evil son of a bitch. He's the good-looking one who gets all the girls and goes to all the nightclubs. The good one is kind of dull and depressing. You know, I, I'm going to take exception to every single one of those things. Um, nonetheless, I think it's kind of interesting that there's going to be now three of these things. There is has been talk that Sigourney Weaver is going to be figuring somehow into this. And what I think is really interesting is that there is going to be another alien movie, but this one is going to be done by, um, I hope I say the name right, Neil Blumkin. Um, he's doing the new alien film. And hmm. he did that that District movie we saw. Um, was it District... Oh, shoot, I can't think District of the name of it. District 9. Was it District 9, was it? Yeah, it was set in South Africa. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's doing the new alien movie. 
and that's actually supposed to be a sequel to James Cameron's Aliens film. So it looks like they're going to completely wipe Alien 3 and Alien 4 out of the entire canon. Yay to that, because I thought those movies were crap. So Neil's going to be doing that, and Ridley's going to be producing those. Hmm. So we've got a real big universal franchise that's being built up here. I, I'm kind of excited by it to see where this could possibly go we'll have to wait and see okay now into the movie music area movie musicals well i wouldn't say movie musicals but movie, movie music now do you remember getting the original star wars soundtrack when it Absolutely. came out well duh you've got the liner notes i know you yeah, I, 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 I know but but for the liner notes i don't have the, the, seat the album anymore yeah but, but for the, the liner sake notes. of our <laughs> listeners <laughs> yes i have them had them. Had them. Yeah, I did too. And um, d I, I'm guessing that you probably played it to death like I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I made a number of cassette tapes. <laughs> yeah. I. Oh, yeah, I did too. And I, I played it just completely. I mean, I exhausted it. I, I just played those those soundtracks over and over and over again because I thought they were so unbelievably rich. And, of course, now Star Wars Fever is really running pretty high right now. So it turns out. Uh, according to Slash Film, they've announced that the soundtrack for Star Wars The Force Awakens is going to be featuring all new music from John Williams. Of course, he's coming back. Who else are you going to get to compose the music for this? Exactly. I mean, yeah, John Williams may have composed you know, mu music for a movie here and a movie there and then kind of left and didn't finish off with the franchise. But he's done every single one of these Star Wars films. And to be honest, I can't think of anybody else who should. Mm-hmm. And but but there's more. There's more. There is more. Um, now, as I said, this soundtrack, of course, will be featuring all new music from legendary John Williams, uh, and it will not be made available until the day the movie hits the theaters. I don't know about you, but do you did you ever get the soundtrack for The Empire Strikes Back? I don't recall. I did, and what happened was a, a schoolmate of mine. Uh, he he comes up to me, and we're at high school now. I don't even remember 1980. Yeah, I'm a senior. He, he comes running up and says, man, I got to tell you this. He says, I was down at the local record store, and they had a soundtrack, an issue for The Empire Strikes Back. He says, he says he bought one. He says he bought it for himself, and he says, you've got to get this. And I said, oh, okay. And he says, you have to get it because it's got photos from the movie inside. Oh and the movie God. hadn't even been out yet. Oh, my God. So, I, needless to say, I ran down, I bought it, and, yeah, there were. There, there was some. There was a, a nice, really good photo of, of, of Yoda. In there, uh, I think there was a photo of um, well, some photos of Cloud City and, and one photo inside the Millennium Falcon with Han, Chewie, Leia, and 3PO. So I think in an attempt to try to avoid the possibility of spoilers, even you know through either uh, inserts, photography, or even the musical cues, they've decided to hold off on the releasing of the soundtrack until the movie comes out. Interesting. I'm, I'm a little bummed, but at the same time, I sort of get what they're going to do. Now... Yeah. But there's more to this. They're going to be re-releasing all of the soundtracks. Hmm. Uh, it was it was made. The announcement was made uh, at StarWars.com, and here are the details. I'm just going to quickly run by these. Uh, this is there's going to be Star Wars: The Ultimate Vinyl co uh, Collection. There will be Star Wars: The Ultimate Soundtrack Edition. There's going to be Star Wars: The Ultimate Digital Collection. Uh, they will be on CD, DVD. Uh, I mean, it's just completely insane what they're going to be doing here. I'm not going to go through the entire thing because CD, DVD, MP3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Columbia, Columbia Music House. Hey, yes. yeah. Well, you know they are owned by Disney now, and Disney is the master of selling everything under the sun mm. in super genius packages. But not all at once, though. Oh that. heavens, no! Not all at once. That you know, you want to milk that cash cow for as long as you can. And here they're doing it again. You know, just like I'm expecting there to be a, a Blu-ray release of the of episodes four, five, and six, but the theatrical versions, which means all those Star Wars fans are going to have to go out and buy it again. I refuse. Um, nonetheless, I, I think this is very exciting. There will be a link to the story if you want to get all the details, because there's a lot of details I didn't go over. But if you want to read these for yourself, they will be on our website at tggeeks.com in our show notes. Now, moving over to television, specifically Netflix. Now, there was a sci-fi series put out by Legendary 
that Netflix just acquired the rights to, hmm. and it's called Colony. Hmm, what was that about? I, I don't recall that. I Did don't we I watch that? No, because I think this originally aired on USA. Oh. That's why we never heard of you it. You know, so many unusual things air on USA or some of these other networks. And we know they're all all part just, of the NBC Universal thing. Yeah, and and you just never see them. No, well, they, we they, don't see them anymore. No, we don't because we cut the cable ages ago. Uh, now, I do have a tiny little synopsis here. It is set in the very near future. Colony centers on one family struggle to survive and bring liberty back to the people of an occupied Los Angeles. Oh, let's hear it for dystopia. Give me a D. Give me a Y. Give me a whatever. Uh, so I don't quite know what to think about that. I mean, obviously, it's now speculative fiction because it is set in the near future. Uh, leading up to its season one premiere on Netflix, you know, they, they licensed uh, second window streaming rights to Colony. Hmm which now joins the ranks of other popular, highly rated, and critically acclaimed series that Netflix has recently acquired, such as How to Get Away with Murder, Jane the Virgin, and Zoo. And those are all entering into their second seasons uh, on regular television. Netflix will stream Colony about a year after its linear broadcast on USA in the U.S. and on Bell Media's Bravo in Canada and after its linear broadcast on other territories worldwide. Now there is a trailer if you want to see the trailer, I highly recommend checking out the show notes for this particular story. It looks like it's going to be interesting. I'm more intrigued with the fact that we're really seeing further development of science fiction. Yeah. I am so happy now yeah. that science fiction has really been regarded now as a legitimate art form. Yeah. Oh, well, legitimate for TV art well, form. Yeah, well, yeah. L legitimate for movies, too. Yeah. I sure. mean, there was a time where you couldn't find a decent science fiction film to hit the theater, and then all of a sudden a little thing called Star Wars comes out, and it completely changes the landscape. I mean, granted, a lot of crap came out as a result of it, but we started to see still science fiction hit the theaters, and now we're getting quality, well, more or less quality, uh, but there's still attempts to create good stories in both theater and the television medium and I, I i think you're right i think television is doing a better job at it yeah uh with uh especially with the shows that are coming on this year so i'm really intrigued with that so uh check out the show notes for this episode and that'll be at tggeeks.com and you can see more about this story colony as well as the trailer yeah now this is a story that i'm 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 really intrigued with and you and i had a really great conversation about this yesterday yeah abc is developing yet another Marvel property. Yay! I, this, and this is going to be set in the cinematic universe, and it is going to be called Damage Control. Uh, it's currently in development, as I said, uh, for ABC, and according to the series description, the Marvel Clearing crew specializes in dealing with the aftermath of the unique fallout from superhero conflicts. Can anybody say New York City and the Avengers? There you go. They are the ones who are in charge of returning lost ray guns to their rightful owners, help to reschedule a wedding venue after it has been vaporized in a superhero battle, or even track down a missing prize African parrot that's been turned to stone or goo. Well, they, they, they could do that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. too. I, well, I they actually, they parallel. did. Well, they, they sort of did. Uh, there was a, I remember there was an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. one-off. Right. In one of the movies, and this was obviously before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came back on the air, so... As far as we were concerned, Coulson was still dead, and they were out trying to recover lost weapons. So I think that was more along yeah. their lines. I think this is like, okay, we've got a real mess here in Midtown. All right, let's 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 get the cleaning crew up, and let's, let's clean this all up. So I think in that respect, it could be very, very interesting. Uh, and as the story points out, sometimes the most important superheroes are the ones behind the scenes. So yeah. actually, in a way, this, there's, there's some kind of truth to this. I think it could be fun. I, I think it could be a lot of fun. It, as we talked about it, it, should, it could be a nice summer show. That's my thought. Now, we talked about this yesterday. Of course, you've got you know, your, your primary series, which is going to be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that runs in the fall and in the spring. During your winter break, if they follow suit like they did last year, which I think was a great idea, run all of Agent Carter during winter break, do damage control in the summer. Yeah. 
And that way, ABC has got a lock on the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe all year round. Yeah. And what could be really fun, I was thinking about this uh, this morning as I was uh, reviewing this story. It doesn't exactly have to linear track with what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is doing. Uh, I mean, they could go back a little bit in time. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they don't, they're, not, they're not stuck in time, if you will. No, in fact, it, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just a tiny, tiny bit. We're not going to go into too much discussion on it, but we are going to discuss a little bit about the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premiere. And there was a little bit of um, mess that happened early in the episode. These guys would be perfect to help clean that up. Yep. You know, so you could start telling those stories and, and kind of pick on the fun ones and, and really turn something out that could be very amusing. Um, now, what I did think was very interesting about this is that it's going to be developed by, oh, let's see, who was it? I just saw the name a moment ago and I, I lost it, but it's, it's oh yeah, it is currently uh, being developed by Ben Carlin of The Daily Show and Modern Family, which is a, a huge comedy hit for ABC right now. Yeah, so th they could have a little have a little fun with this. I think I think it'd be great. I think it could be a lot and, of fun. And I, I hope they do it in the summer instead of trying to shoehorn it in to another slot. Well, especially when TV. you when you consider that they're still developing a spin-off for Mockingbird, you know, Bobby and Hunter called Marvel's Most yeah. Wanted. But uh, and I just discovered this this morning, there is a new mystery project that is being helmed by John Ridley who is the Oscar-winning screenwriter of 12 Years a Slave. So there's another another series that's being developed for ABC, apparently, that is going to be in the cinematic universe. It's like, wow. I mean, okay, it'll be kind of interesting to see how they're going to try and do all that. I'm, I, With uh, Bobby and Mockingbird, I mean, if they take them off of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and give them their own show, then you don't have to worry so much about any kind of time continuity there. Yeah. But with the mystery project, mm, hard to say. So we'll just ha have to wait and see. But if you want to read more on this, this story will also be in our show notes. Yes, check out tggeeks.com. Now, this one just, I this story broke the internet. <laughs> BBC Three is going to do a spinoff of Doctor Who, and it will be called Class. Hmm. And um, this is like that, Class. Class. And this somebody is, left the shower running. Someone left the shower running. Uh, and this all stems from uh, Clara's job as a teacher working at Coal Hill School. Hmm, interesting. And I think a lot of this is also kind of maybe stemming from what happened last season where we had an entire story that was centered around a field trip that Clara's now departed boyfriend Danny had taken a bunch of students on yeah so this is all that we've really got right now uh, obviously it's a new story but it's going to be set as we said around Coal Hills secondary school and right now we don't know much else except that it is being done so everybody's talking about it everybody's wondering what's going on and of course among the hot button topics are who's going to be in it uh, whether or not the doctor himself might actually put in an appearance, none of these details are known because it is just too soon to say. Very interesting. Yeah, and uh, th we have a story. You can get it to our show, get to it through our show notes at tggeeks.com. But it runs down a whole list of people who did appear last season at Coal Hill. Uh, one of them, in fact, she actually traveled with the doctor for an episode, and boy, was she annoying as I'll get up. <laughs> but uh, she, they're talking about possibly her. But I want to I want to touch on one. One of the one of the cast members that people are saying, "Oh, you need to get him," is William Russell, who played Ian Chesterton in the William Hartnell era. Right. right. Now Ian is still alive. He's ninety. And we have learned that he still works at Coal Hill. He has a, a very respectable position. Mm. Uh, I think it's like like dean. Interesting. Uh, for the school. Oh yes, he's the he's the school's head of governors. Oh, interesting. So there's a lot of talk. Could you get Ian Chesterton? I am going to be a heretic here, and say don't get get Ian Chesterton. Don't get 
William Russell, the actor. True. Don't get William Russell. William is 90. Don't get him. I want to do a callback to something we saw in a Sarah Jane, uh, 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 the Sarah Jane Adventures. What, what? What? There was an episode there called, uh, I believe it was called Death of the Doctor. Right. And we actually saw Sarah and we, oh, shoot, John Pertwee companion. Oh. Um, uh, Joe Grant. Jojo. Jojo. Jojo Grant. They were all there. And at the very end of the story, Sarah is telling her young, her young friends, her young neighbors and such, the wonderful adventures that she had with the doctor and some of his companions. And she tells a story. She says that she has heard of these two people, Ian and Barbara, who were the two original teachers from uh, from uh, the William Hartnell season. They joined. They were right, right there at the very beginning. Right. And she says, "Story has." And she says, "They're married." Story has it that they traveled in the TARDIS so much they stopped aging. Oh, fascinating! That would be that would, yeah, that could that be fun. would be fun. And I would say, you know, th- uh, we saw uh, as part of the 50th for Doctor Who last year, they did this docudrama, uh, Adventures in Time and Space. Yeah. And they had an actor who was supposed to play a young William Russell. Get him. Yeah. Get him to play the part of Ian Chesterton. I mean, there's something that's really kind of meta about it. I think it'd be far out. So I say, yes, get Ian Chesterton to come back but get a different actor, get a younger actor who could look the part. Yeah. Uh, and that way you're doing a really nice callback to Sarah Jane as well, and you're creating more of that wonderful synergy. Yeah, and you could probably bring um, him in for as a cameo. Yeah, give him a cameo. Uh, yeah, for, you know. Or, you know, if you want, you could actually have him mysteriously age overnight, you know, and is it right, now, right. Now, now life has caught up to him. And now he really is 90. I mean, you could possibly do it that way. Any number of things, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I'd, Give him a cameo. Yeah, give him a cameo. And b- before we close off, I do want to give thanks to a very, very, very dear friend of mine in England, Darren Anderson. He's the one who pointed this story out to us. So thank you, Darren. Uh, I love you. I really appreciate you pointing the story out to me. I think it's awesome. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys, and they're geeks. Is that okay? And that means it's time for the birthdays. Here are a few selected birthdays for October 5th through October 11th. October 5th, Jeff Conaway would have been 65. You know, tragic. Absolutely tragic. He was, from everything that we've heard about him, he was a really awesome guy. Yeah. And just... Trying to get he his just, life back together. Yeah, and, but a really, really awesome guy and turns out a huge lover of science fiction. Yeah. Also on October 5th, Karen Allen is 63. She's Ooh, another one who's three. really uh, made a presence in genre with uh, both um, you know, it, Raiders of Lost Ark as well as a big cult film, um, Starman. Yep. Guy Pierce, 47. Also on October 5th, Ray Kroc was born in 1903. Why do I know that name? Ray Kroc McDonald's. Of course. Now, I, the only reason I put that in there is because I have a kind of a apocryphal story. I, I think it's apocryphal. A friend of mine in Albuquerque grew up in Chicago, and when he was a young man he, walking home from school, he always walked by this one big walled garden, and there was always this guy sitting out on this park bench. And he, he got to know him, and, and he'd sit with there and talk to him on the the park bench periodically, you know, as he's walking home. And it turns out that was Ray Kroc. Whoa. And he, you know, and McDonald's was a big, a big deal even then in Chicago at well, the time. Well, yeah, it's, so, it's, I mean, McDonald's has been around for forever. Yeah. yeah, before we were born. And he never even knew it was Ray Kroc because, but that was, the wall was his backyard basically to his house. And he never knew that. And I write, and I just know there are people out there who are saying, oh, what a Kroc. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Just like I said, maybe an apocryphal story. I don't know. Also, October 5th, Donald Pleasance would have been 95. Well, he was 95. one of the creepiest actors. Yeah, he was great, though. Neil deGrasse Tyson is 56. 
On October 6th, Yoan Gruffud is 41. They're still trying to shop around forever to bring that oh, show back. They're so. still I trying to so. find something. And I know that he wants it badly, too, because it's he loved the series. It's a great show. Great show. Also, October 6th in 1846, George Westinghouse. October 7th, Yo-Yo Ma is 59. Aaron Ashmore is 35. And his twin, Sean, is 35 as well. What? Really? Yeah. How about now, that? Th- that is one amazing coincidence. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds? What are the odds that twins would be the same age? Amazing. Bishop Desmond Tutu is 83. And Nils Bohr was born on October 7, 1885. October 8, Chevy Chase is 71. And Sigourney Weaver, we just talked about her, 65. You know, I don't think that woman ages. I don't think she does. No. October 9th, John Lennon would have been 65. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say something just really. I mean, uh, I know this is going to send me to hell for saying this, but I'm gonna quote a line from Independence Day. Shot of the back. What a waste. Yeah. Tony Shalhoub, 61. Scott Bakula is 60. October 9th also. Brandon Routh, 35. Mm. Brian Blessed is 78. Uh, I should Brian Blessed! Well, I was going to, but I didn't think I could do the voice rights. So. I can't either. I'm just faking it. <laughs> and Peak Doctor is 46. Guillermo del Toro is 50 on October 9th. And Charles Walgreen was born in 1873. The founder of Walgreens drugstores. Uh, I kind of figured that one. Yeah. October 10th, Ben Vereen is 68. Look, it's Ben Vereen on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a throwback to it. The Thanksgiving episode from Mad, Mad About, About You. you. Right. <laughs> no, that's Ira. No, it's Ben Vereen. <laughs> anyway. You need to see it. It's, a, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a hilarious. You'll, don't be drinking anything or eating anything when you watch the episode. No. Because you'll spit it out. Yeah, that'll be the, the, the messiest <laughs> spit take you'll have ever taken. October 10th, also Manu Bit at 45. And Ed Wood would have been 91. You know, we I think for that day, we have to pull out, again, Plan 9. Plan 9. Oh, oh why not? <laughs> also on October 10th, in 1813, Joe Green. Better known as? Giuseppe Verdi. Yes, he was born in 1813. Imagine that. Wow. But he, he really composed. He turned out a lot of really turned, good music. But, but he, well, well, I... Beyond, <laughs> he was in his seventies, or the, he was still writing music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he had one heck of a long career. Yep. October eleventh, Dawn French is fifty-seven. I adore her. She is fabulous. You you've got to see people. V- Vicar, v- Vicar of, of Dibley. Oh my God! Look for it. It Find is it. hilarious. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Mainline it. It is such a funny show. <laughs> so great. October eleventh, also. Henry Hines was born in 1844. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Forget about whether Han shot first. He did. Is it true that Han Solo teamed up with a six-foot green rabbit? Did Darth Vader profess a devotion to the immortal gods of the Sith? And did Leia's unhealthy attraction to her brother grow for years? Ew. Hi, I'm voice actor Michael Corley, and I want to answer these questions and more on the Vox Box Star Wars comic book podcast. Each Vox Box episode covers classic Star Wars comics, starting with the original Marvel series in 1977 all the way to the present day. So tune in, have some fun, and may the Force be with you at voxboxpodcast.com. Go give a listen to our friends over at Box Box Star Wars Podcast. And now, it's time for listener feedback. Well, we got some audio feedback. We actually had a call in from our dear friend over at Megapodzilla, Crazy Joe. I can only imagine what he has to say. Here we go. Hey, guys. Crazy Joe here. I just was listening to your show on uh, House 
tell if the show is worth watching or not. One thing I'd like to point out, I don't watch Scorpion. I've never watched Scorpion. I haven't seen a single episode of Scorpion. It's not my type of show. Uh, I, I know just from the premise that that's not my kind of show. But from everything I've heard, from all over the place, not just you guys, the pilot was abysmal. Just truly abysmal. It was abysmal. The show was a hit. Abysmal was nice. That you didn't watch half the pilot. And like I said, I haven't watched any of it. But it occurs to me that the show probably got pretty good. Because if you think about it, if it was that bad, it didn't really have anywhere to go but up. Like the, the whole thing is, if the second episode's worse than the pilot, well, considering how bad I've heard that pilot was from everyone, I bet the second episode has, by default, be a lot better. So um, that's food for thought. Mm. I, I would figure that if you're starting from an incredibly low bar, it's not too hard to uh, to get over it because you really didn't set it too high for yourself. But <laughs> that's uh, just my my thoughts on the matter. And again, they're completely uneducated thoughts because I haven't seen the damn show. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Very interesting. Well, I would say that I saw part of a later episode and I saw very little improvement, to be honest. However, you make a good point, although, as I, and yeah, Joe, you are right. It should be looked at some more. I mean, it yeah. could only go up. But the cynical part of me says, yeah, but if you put, you know, gold on 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 a turd it's still a turd exactly yeah and and i want to just say that we were thinking about watching the second episode but i'm going to get on i'm going to jump on a soapbox here um we can't watch it because that's a cbs product and you cannot watch anything on cbs because we've cut the cord you can't watch anything on their website and they don't put anything out on Hulu or Netflix or any place else after the show has aired. You must subscribe to their subscription thing. Not going to happen. Sorry. That or you find another distributor like iTunes or like Amazon. And But then, then again, you're paying to yep. be able to see this. And I... Given given the bad reaction we had after the pilot... I wouldn't even pay two cents for it. No. To be honest, I mean, if if they want me to be able to watch this show and find some kind of redemption in it, then you better give it to me for free. Absolutely. That's all I got to say on that. Yep. So now Joe did also offer some other feedback. And <laughs> oh, honey, you're going to love this. Uh Oh, he said because uh, he was uh, sent this to me personally and says, you know, Ben, far be it from me to ever criticize another person's art. But I do have one suggestion for two gay geeks. Uh oh. I would recommend getting rid of the evil laugh at the end of the episodes. You guys are too happy. And that <laughs> so <laughs> and that sounds like something out of a dark, scary podcast. Well, we it's it's there for our horror fans. Yeah, and he says, <laughs> I like the music. I hope I don't sound like a jerk mentioning it, but the laugh ju just sounds so evil and doesn't fit your personalities, at least. I don't think it does. I could be totally wrong, and maybe the two of you murder people at night, because if you are serial killers, I love the laugh. Just please don't kill me. <laughs> We're not going to kill you. It, it's actually there. It, it, we had used it. We used to use it at the beginning uh, at the, on the intro, and I, I discarded that. But uh, it's kind of there just as a remnant for the horror thing, you know, because we do say that we talk about horror, and occasionally we do. Thank you for the input, though. I, I will, I'll consider that. Yeah. And Joe also added one other thing in regards to our interview with Jim Hansen. Now, Jim mentioned working with somebody named uh, Jack Plotnick. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, turns out Joe interviewed Jack Plotnick on Megapodzilla about a year ago. He was the deputy mayor on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So he, and uh, that he also uh, wrote and directed. Space Station 76. I have heard about this. It's supposed to be a very dark comedy. Hmm, interesting. I've heard about this. I have not seen it, so he's recommending that we should probably take a look at it. Very interesting. Okay. So then, and then lastly, uh, some feedback from our other good friend, Arkel. And this is in regards to the Prometheus story. 
how Ridley oh, Scott... Be, it must be recent then. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Arkel writes, three? 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 That stupid movie gets three sequels? But whether or not we actually get Pacific Rim 2 is iffy at this point? Hey, Ridley, are the three sequels also going to have characters who can only move the plot along by being complete jelly-brained idiots? Oh, and what other good actors' talents are going to be wasted on unlikable characters? And then uh, I, I can't even repeat the hashtag. Uh, so, yeah, you make a good point, but I'm, I'm going to give Ridley a little bit of uh, benefit of the doubt on this one. Yes, I want to see Pacific Rim 2, and he says Pacific Rim 2 is being uh, forwarded. They're, they're definitely working on it. He's, in fact, he apparently was just supposed to have submitted a script just the other day, despite the fact that Warner Brothers said Ixnay. Uh, Guillermo still says it's on. No, well, no, well, yeah, Guillermo still says that's on. As far as Ridley uh, and the Prometheus sequels go, though, I have read that Ridley later on did realize where he made the error. Mm. When it comes to Prometheus, I'm not entirely sure what he is referring to. Yes, a lot of us all kind of thought that Prometheus was uh, aesthetically. It's a very beautiful looking science fiction film. A gorgeous set designs. Yeah, really kind of a sort of a weak story with even weaker characters. I would agree. But apparently Ridley also seems to know that. And now that he's working with Neil Blumkin regarding uh, the new Alien film. I, I'm going to give really the benefit of the doubt and say that he learned from his mistakes. Yeah, it could be too much. We'll have to wait and see. It's very possible that the studio may axe the next two sequels after they see uh, Alien Paradise Lost. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Okay. So that is all of the feedback. That's the feedback for today. Okay. Well, we certainly would appreciate your feedback. You are important to us to help us understand what we need to do or what maybe some things that we need to talk about or want to talk about. And a reminder, go to TG Geeks webcast page. It's TG Geeks webcast and uh, like our page. You can comment on our page there. And just a reminder that there is a TG Geeks as a person that is the uh, host for the TG Geeks webcast page. And if you like our show, or even if you dislike it, you can comment on the Facebook page, on our YouTube episodes, or at tggeeks.com, and you could receive a shout-out on a future episode, or you can call our listener feedback. Just, just like, like Joe did. Just like Crazy Joe did. And we'll play your comment on air at 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357. This is Mark Biaggi, and you're listening to the Two Gay Geeks webcast. You name it. They'll talk about it. Okay, I want to talk about a couple of shows here. First one I want to discuss is CSI. One of our CSI. favorite shows. Yes. It finally gave us the swan song uh, uh, over the we uh, last weekend. Yes, we just watched it last. We night. We just watched it last night. Yeah, because I was traveling. Yeah, you were you were so. out of town on business, so we had to wait. But yeah, we just finally watched it. Uh, it was a nice little two hour movie. They brought back um, Marg Helgenberger. I can never pronounce her name right. <laughs> Marge Helgenberger. Marge, yeah, well, her, her as as Catherine Willows, and then uh, William Peterson came back as Grissom. The former director or, or the night lead of the crime lab. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about that? I, I thought it was interesting. There were, it was um, kind of a throwback. Some of it was a throwback to the original quirkiness of the, the series in its early days, especially where Gil was uh, concerned, Grissom. And, but it was, uh, it was an interesting. Swan song, if you will, yeah. It yeah. And it launched the uh, you know launched Ted Danson on into CSI Cyber. That's going to happen. So yeah, I have I I have just one little. I don't I don't know if regret is the right word, but the one thing that I would have liked to have seen more um, interplay 
between Grissom and DB. Yeah. There was very little because, and I, I would say that what they did with DB was a really great idea. He spends all his time working at sussing out the, uh, the, the suspect of these bombings, and he's doing it on a laptop. And he's using software to do it. Well, clearly, this is going to be the means to launch him into CSI Cyber, yeah. which I think uh, airs this week. Uh, this weekend is, I believe, tomorrow night. I'm, I want to be, sh- you know, as of this recording, tomorrow night. So it'll be Sunday night. So, okay, I kind of get why you want to do that. But he is such, I mean, Ted Danson's character is so very, very strong. And and Gil, I mean, let's be, let's be real. I mean, he, the, <laughs> the man is uh, a, a very quirky walking en- encyclopedia. Yeah. So to to have those two kind of play off each other, I think would have been enormous fun. But I think what they decided to do is, and it sort of makes sense, they wanted us to give us some kind of development and closure regarding the relationship between Gil and, and Sarah, yeah. his ex-wife. Exactly. So they put a lot of time into that. And okay, I'll I I will applaud that because they didn't shortchange it. They gave it a good amount of development. Yes, they've only got two hours worth of time in order to tell a story. For the most part, I thought it was kind. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, at times a little horrific. Yeah. Uh, especially right. when it looked like there were going to be a bunch of innocent children who were about to be blown up. Yeah, that was that. It, yeah, had me on the edge of my seat. It did. Was, it oh it. God. I was very very nervous throughout a good good deal of the the story and the way they brought Catherine back too i thought was a great touch yeah how she comes back from the fbi now she's um i'm assuming since it appears that <gasps> spoiler sarah decided to resign the directorship yeah who knows that's, so that's odd. Catherine said that she wanted it she i yep. mean she mentioned that to db that uh since he was going to be heading over to dc to run up cyber head up cyber that she wanted to throw her head in or her hat her hat in uh, the ring for the directorship of the lab. Yeah, I, you know, and now I'm kind of like, Dad, gum it. I kind of wish the series was still going on, yeah. because there's a lot of potential there. I mean, Catherine's own daughter now works at the lab, right? So I think there would have been a lot of fun there. So I, I don't know. I, I would have liked to have seen that go on, but oh well. Oh well. Oh well. So now CSI Cyber. Yeah, you know, So we now got CSI Cyber coming up, and uh, we'll report on that when once we have a chance to see how that new dynamic is going to play out. Yeah, it could be interesting. I'm I'm interested by it. I'm very am very interested. Add some continuity from. <laughs> well, I like the universe building. You know, I've exactly. al- I'm always a big fan of some kind of synergy between shows. I mean, that's the one thing that I love between you know the the three earlier CSI properties is that they did cross over. Right. Not often, but they did, and I love it whenever they do that. Yeah. Now, Agents of Shield. Agents We're not going to go into Shield. too much detail. Um, I want to save this. I, I want to save you know a big discussion on this for a little bit later down the road. But I can't. We, we can't let it go by and not say anything. Yeah, it it, it was a good comeback. Yeah. Very strong. I Very thought it strong. hit the ground running. Yep. And some very interesting things happen. There was some very interesting stuff. You can actually see the teaser. We've got a, an yeah. article on the teaser that was released. Yes, we have that. So. You can see the teaser for yourself if you have, if you have not watched the uh, season premiere episode we'll yet. We'll have a we'll have a link for that as well. Yeah, and uh, I do have to discuss Fitz. Ooh, wow! This is a whole new Fitz. This. This is 180 degrees away from what we got last year. Yeah, yeah. His character is going to, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I love, well, I've always liked the, the young man's acting. I remember when we saw him in The Fades. Yeah. Years ago on BBC America. And, and even then I thought he was a, a brilliant actor. And, and obviously I still do. But what he has been able to turn out these past two seasons has been just startling yep. you know first portraying someone with severe uh, brain damage yep and then to come back and to be someone who is so unbelievably in control yep i mean y- yes he's being guided and led by his passions but this is a man who i mean he's he really is a bull in a china shop right now oh absolutely 
And he his final scene in, in that premiere episode just had us both going, whoa. Oh, my gosh. Big yeah. time, well, I was really just. I'm yeah. very excited for the show. I am too. I, I think they have a lot of a lot of room to grow and and go. And they're of course they were setting up the the other spinoff, so we won't say anything yeah. about that. But because uh, you just have to see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's well worth it. And yep. we are a little later on down the road. We are going to have a nice discussion about that as well, uh, in addition to a couple of other shows. But yeah, we will give this series a much greater. Uh, a much greater time as it yep, deserves. Exactly. Now, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy. That Hollow. just came back too. Oh my gosh! Um, and it came back with a bang too. Came back with a huge it's bang. Like, wow! They they just skipped ahead. What six months or so? It's about six months. Yeah, I think it's six months, and it it really it just kind of hits the ground running again. But what I you know it was we, exciting. You know what I like? I like how they addressed that six months. Exactly. You yeah. know they they just didn't. They, they just didn't blow it off. I mean, we talked last week about TV shows having built-in uh, beginnings and endings. Right. And Expiration dates. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sleepy Hollow had pretty much introduced what the end game was, and that was going to be the destruction of this, this arch demon Moloch. Yeah. And, okay, he dies. Ichabod's witchy wife, Katrina, dies. Their son, who's now older than them, um, uh, shoot, what's um, the character's I name? I, I don't remember. Played by John Noble. Yep. I cannot I remember his name. His name went out of my head. Yep. Shame on us. Uh, he dies. So where does the show go? Exactly. Well, they they kind of even touch on that. I mean, and it, they kind of make the horseman go away of sorts. Oh, and you know, and the horseman has always been sort sort of a the arch nemesis. To, to Ichabod, and they kind of made him go away, although maybe not. Given yeah. given what was done, I mean, it looks like he was absorbed. Yeah. So just yeah, we won't say anything more. Won't, I won't say anything. It, much it came back with a with with a vengeance. Yes, it, it, it was really great. did. Uh, they brought back. I mean, the the big new villain for this season is. A mythological character that Inter- yeah, I did uh, not expect. Yeah, just don't give too much away. <laughs> no, I'm not giving any names, but and I, I should have figured it out when I saw a certain item. Yes, exactly. In the uh, early I on the episode, and it I it didn't even click on me until uh, Abby at the end of the episode makes some kind of comment. She makes a joke where she refers to a name. And then it all came together, and I thought, I'm, I'm really an idiot. I should have seen that coming. So I'm very excited to see where this is going to go. I think they're going for a, a smaller season order this year because they went too long last year, and that kind of stretched things out a little bit. I think if they go for like a half season, you know, like 13 episodes, yeah. they can tell a much better uh, overall narrative. Right. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But, yeah, it was a very, very good start. Um, and, of course, the jokes – were plentiful. Yep. I, I love it every time Ichabod decides that he sees something that is offensive to his colonial uh, leanings, whatever they may be. Yes. <laughs> says, the I, corner I, goes in the front. You're not a pirate. You're not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> to a guy that's wearing a tricorn hat. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, you know, once again, they hit on some really, really good points. And, you know, and now, given some of the changes that's happened to some of the characters, I can already see where this may lead into the big crossover that is set for next uh, early next year, and that would be for Bones. Yeah, I can see how that's going to happen. So Could I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, and pretty much that's all that we've really got right now on returning television shows. Um, we got more coming up, obviously this week, yeah. with uh, CSI Cyber coming back, uh, Arrow and and Flash are coming back. So we'll have obviously a lot more to talk about and. And uh, so just sit tight until then. Yeah. So uh, we have a few follow-up items. I have one item, and that is for conditioning the movie. That's out of the U.K. They had an Indiegogo campaign to raise 750 pounds, and they've actually met that goal. They're at 1,031. They're 137% funded. They have 25 days left. 
and they're trying for a stretch goal of 1,500 pounds. If you could uh, consider that, you could be part of an independent film. This has a, a social message. It's about uh, a gay couple that has um, is abused, if you will. So it's kind of a horror thing. Uh, give them a, a, a look. Now, there's a lot of information on the Indiegogo campaign website, and they are at Conditioning UK on Twitter. So give them a, a look, and we'll have a link for their Indiegogo campaign. Yes, and I also want to give another sh uh, a different shout out to the Doctor Who fan cast guide. Now, these uh, this is actually uh, called Doctor Who colon Talking Who. They are on Twitter, and like every day or every other day, they put out something called the fan cast guide. They have been carrying the bulk of our stories after we publish them on our website. And thank you very much. I, I can't thank you enough because we started to see our numbers just really go up um, rather largely. I mean, it's through, through so many different methods and, and means have our numbers really gone up. Uh, you know, interviewing people at BTI, uh, the, st the stories that we covered at Horrible Imaginings. That, in addition to the stories we publish on our website that Doctor Who, uh, Talking Who picks up, our numbers have just really gone almost through the roof and I can't thank them enough they put out uh, like I said it's a regular fan cast guide they they alternate that with something called Newswire and they just pretty much uh, talk about all sorts of stories some of them are cultural some of them are arts and entertainment they are obviously mostly fascinated with all things who and you can follow them on Twitter at talking who and we will have the link for them on our show notes. And a link for the FanCast Guide as well? Um, the FanCast Guide, they put a new FanCast Guide out, so the link is always changing. Oh, the link. So it, it's But they a, tweet the link. It's a tweet. Okay. They so always tweet the link for their new I, FanCast Guide sure. issues, so that's ah. where you can see it. So if you follow at Talking Who, you can then start to see the, they, they will tweet out each new issue of the FanCast Guide as well as the Newswire. Okay. And then lastly... As always, a wonderful shout out to the Facebook group, The Gay Geek, for allowing us to post our episodes on their website. The URL is facebook.com slash groups slash The Gay Geek. And um, the moderator, Jeremiah, really, really nice guy who is just as big a gay geek as they can possibly get. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Gay you. Geek. Up next time, do you know? I have no idea. Maybe it'll be an interview. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll have an interview. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, that's our final sound. That should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357 from TG Squared Studios. I am Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. I bid you peace. Cheers. Cheers.